This is Twit. I like I love the title of this article, Michelle, because it so the title of Michelle's article is Android 13 will add a setting to throttle internet speeds. And if you kind of just read that as given, you might be wondering why would they do that? But there's actually pretty good reasons to do that. Uh, Michelle, if, if you don't mind, like kind of maybe just highlighting why does this setting exist? I mean, I'm excited about it, but I'd love to kind of hear you what, hear your thoughts on why this is a good thing to be adding. Uh, Cause we've talked about a lot of bad throttling lately in the few weeks, but why mm-hmm. could this be a good thing? <laughs> So the official reason that Google is adding a setting to throttle internet speeds is for app developers. Um, Currently, you know, a lot of developers probably live in countries or have access to much faster internet speeds than the average worldwide internet connection. So that poses a problem whenever you try to mock um, a user's device who lives in maybe like, um, you know, an Asian country and they have maximum of like one Mbps download speed, mm-hmm. which is like, you know, painfully slow. How do you, how do you test the, your application's behavior when your internet speed is hundred Mbps and things load instantly versus a users, um, who has one Mbps and like things load painfully slowly. You might have unforeseen problems that like, you know, something loads too slowly and the application continues to, you know, move on without everything loading fully. And there might be some like unforeseen bugs and, in order to QA test that, you know, you need some way to mimic that um, internet condition. So right now, there are some really convoluted ways you can do that. There's a funny <laughs> yes. solution on uh, Stack Overflow. Someone mentioned putting your phone in a literal microwave. Don't turn it on, of course, because that would destroy it. <laughs> Just put yeah. it in a microwave so that would completely block any signal. And of course, there are some there are saner options like um, using launching the Android emulator in Android Studio yeah. with the command line to uh, to, to throttle the speed manually. And uh, you could also hotspot your phone or your device to another device and do that. You could VPN, you know, there, there are many ways. But finally, Google is adding a native option in developer settings, presumably, that will let you just set a cap on the internet speed. That sounds yeah, insanely I mean, useful. It is so <laughs> useful. And I, I can definitely attest like that this is something that, you know, I think a lot of us on dev teams kind of find our own ways around. Like, for example, in Trello, you guys, you, you all don't get to look at it, but we actually have a dev panel where we actually inter- inter- uh, intercept our network calls and either add delays or add like mock exceptions to try to catch some of this. It's not the best solution. It's not consistent. And I keep forgetting to turn it off when I'm actually devving something where I, I don't want any exceptions to come, like, like kind of like fake exceptions to come in. But it is like, uh, as you mentioned, kind of really important. And I think we I mentioned a few weeks ago about kind of like one of the great things about Android and one of the thing, things that I'm most proud of as being an Android dev is that um, Android is kind of meant to be for everybody and is in places where, yeah, the, you don't have great connectivity. There's still like, um, I was looking at a GSMA state of mobile internet connectivity report from 2021 and in places like which they call low to middle income countries, there's still like a large uh, prevalence of 3G, even 2G in places. And as we kind of like keep getting better Android features, as we keep like doing more and more in terms of like what we do on the net in terms of streaming and video and all that kind of stuff, there's always going to be kind of a gap in connectivity and what you kind of wish you had and what you actually had. And actually as a dev, it's kind of easy to forget that. Very often we'll, you know, be diving under like our optimal, like here I am in my office with my Wi-Fi, and certain things are hard to test. Like I actually was testing image loading this 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 week uh, on a on a feature that I'm working on and I kind of forgot to work on the error screen because very like when 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 is my image loading going to error unless like maybe my wi-fi blows out so it's an easy thing to kind of bypass especially for a lot of devs if you're in like kind of ideal situation so having this as an easy way to kind of go through a checklist of okay here's how I deal with latency here's how I deal with like throttle connection speeds and 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 having it be a consistent and nine microwave, non microwave involved uh, way of testing these things is super important and kind of again part of like the hopefully Android ideal of developing for and uh, developing for and optimizing apps for all kinds of you know connectivity, all kinds of like locations, and all kinds of like users around the world, um, and even like in you know high income countries like here, you still have 
you know, opportunities where you might not have great internet speeds. Like I think a big example we always talk about is even in say New York where Trello's headquarters, whereas people go into the subway and you don't always have internet on the subway. So it's kind of like a high tide lifts all boats kind of thing. When you have the ability to, when you have the ability and drive and kind of like the discipline to, you know, develop and optimize for these conditions. So this just makes it easier. It, it really just makes it easier. Sometimes it, it's, it's really strangely hard to test for suboptimal conditions. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm actually pretty excited about this and hopefully this will make it easier because I, it is, it, it's like ideally the right thing to do, but like in your day-to-day life, when you just want to get crap working, you don't always think about these things. So hopefully this will be, make it easier and also um, make it so that I don't keep leaving on insert exceptions into my network calls setting on our dev panel. So we, so again, like it'll be less us having to manufacture our own solutions and kind of relying on Google stuff. So I actually was really excited about this nice. and uh, yeah. Well, in any time that um, you're resorting to putting your device into a microwave, that's probably like a signal that like, yeah, there's yeah. probably a better way. Yep. Google could probably figure out something that'll save some phones from getting nuked in the microwave. <laughs> it's just not, it's just not good for the, di- it's, it's not good for the display. It's not good. No. Like, yeah, so there's, there's a lot there's, that it's yeah, not good yeah, for, yeah. turns yeah. out. Not good for your microwave, right? I mean, that can't uh, yeah. be good for your microwave or your food. Not good have. for any of the plastic that it's built with. Yeah, right. In general, yeah. just don't yeah. put your phone in your microwave. Yeah. It's yeah. probably yeah. going to turn out don't bad if it. you do that. Yeah. 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 I mean, if anything, here's a, here's a microwave pro tip. Uh, <laughs> lower the power level and cook longer. Oh. Right. So, uh, yeah. Cause <laughs> oh. so, I mean, I don't know if that would affect the phone at all in that way, but I find when I'm reheating food, I'll drop the power level to 60% and do it for like four minutes. You get a nice even cook as opposed to, you know, j- the center being cold and the outside being hot. So it, like, you definitely don't want the center of your phone to be it hot. It really yeah. depends so. on how much uh, the phone is made up of water actually too. Right. True. Thermal well, thermal cooling, you can get, I mean, you can, you can wet a paper towel and put it over the phone. Right. Exactly. And then, exactly. I mean, that, that works with dumplings. That works with your standard rice, you know, things like that. Um, so maybe that works with your phone too. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay. If, if it has thermal cooling, it's it might work better than if it doesn't. Um, you know, you I just want to warn or... anyone anyone who's listening: the past several minutes was all parody and jokes. Yes, it was yes, not please serious. Do, not do that. Please don't put your phone <laughs> into a microwave. Yes. Not, not I even just say, to say that you did. Just, just don't. No, yeah, don't. Not, don't, don't try to get email of the week. <laughs> That's right. No, no, we don't. You will by, not get by email. By sending of the a photo, week. you will not get email of the week. Thank you. Uh, well, by sending a photo that. of your phone. Yeah, can we do it in backwards like the Beatles? Um, <laughs> yeah, we don't. We don't want to see any stories of people who microwave their phones. Please, just don't. For just don't sure. Do it. For yeah, sure. So.